Apocalyptic studies in uh, in Byzantinistic are, are quite important because it's, they're part of what we could define as political literature. Of course, there are very different ways of defining uh, apocalyptic literature. We could speak in terms of uh, kind of individual eschatology, for example. Uh, but if we speak in terms of what Christian theology defines in terms of collective eschatology, that's political. And one of the ways of presenting that to the population was uh, framed in this specific literary genre we, do, we call apocalypses. So both in late antiquity in, uh, in, in among Christians in Syriac or Armenian, uh, or of course in Greek and later on in Byzantium, apocalypses were part of the way they understood the place of the Christian empire in a history of salvation. That's why it's important. Uh, so it has many reports where the biblical traditions, the uses of the biblical book of Daniel, uh, less, much less, but still important, the, uh, the use of the of Revelation, uh, the Apocalypse of John, and, and the production of new texts, uh, new texts in, in, under the, the, the common title of Visions of Daniel. So re, re, uh, utilizations of, uh, of the Danielic tradition uh, among the Byzantines. If you've just finished the conference here at the yeah. Institute of Southeast European yeah. Studies of the Romanian Academy, um, what was uh, the topic of the conference? Well, the topic was the, the links between biblical literature and apocalyptic literature in the Syriac world uh, in the 7th century. So it was not specifically about Byzantium, but about the uh, production and circulation of apocalyptic texts in uh, Syria, Palestine, and Egypt, or northern Mesopotamia in the 7th century. I, what I brought here to Bucharest is uh, something I'm already working on and I hope to publish uh, on this uh, pretty soon. It's about the connection between uh, very specific uh, Syriac codex of the Bible, of the Old Testament, called the Codex Ambrosianus, that survives uh, in, in the Ambrosian Library in, in Milan, in Italy. And it's the only example of uh, the presence amongst the Syriacs, in the, in the Syriac tradition, of a couple of, of apocalyptic texts, well known. Uh, by biblical scholars, but I think we should try to uh, understand the production of the of the codex uh, as a thing uh, in under the light of seventh uh, century events, including or mostly the 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 capture of Jerusalem by the Sasanian Persians. So that's the the, the background of the composition of the Codex and inclusion of these uh, texts in this biblical manuscript. Uh, and the other thing I said that we, we need to study uh, the connection between the terminological uses of uh, apocalyptic terms in the, both the biblical uh, text in Syriac and apocalyptic text in Syriac in order to, to see if there are correspondences or not. That was pretty much uh, my, my, my lecture, what my lecture was about uh, and, um, uh, and it's something new that I wanted to, to bring here, something I'm working on and I hope we'll, uh, we'll publish something on it in the, in the future. What about the connection with Romania? Well, first of all, I'm here because I have connection with Romanian scholars, which are very strong, and there's a, a very strong tradition uh, here in Romania of uh, South, uh, South Eastern European studies, Balkan studies, and of course, Byzantine, uh, Byzantine history. And so I'm here because these uh, colleagues invited me while I was still uh, doing some research in, in Paris. Um, uh, but there is, a, in my own personal history, 
there is a very old tradition of, of links with Romania um, on several different aspects. I, I was born and raised in Buenos Aires and in my youth it was always said that uh, there was a long line of urban cultivated life, uh, a society of coffees, bookstores and theatres and the two poles were Buenos Aires and Bucharest and there was something that, this kind of things could also be found in several other major European, continental European cities. But Bucharest, it was said in my Jews, was, uh, was different, it was a plus. And that was the, the French language tradition of Romanian culture. And we also had that. So this uh, Francophone tradition made of Bucharest something closer to our minds. And the rare Argentinians that passed through Bucharest in the late 19th, early 20th century spoke about that and that was underlined also uh, by Romanian immigrants in Argentina, well, well implanted Romanian immigrants in the world of arts and literature in, in Buenos Aires, many, many of them, many of you. And so, but on, a, on other aspect is that I can trace my vocation as a Byzantinist in uh, attending the service of the Romanian church in Buenos Aires. Somehow, I don't, I don't know why exactly, my family attended once a month or something like that. I think because they were friend, good friends of uh, several uh, Romanian uh, couples, uh, we attended the services of the Romanian church. Uh, and then, uh, after the service, uh, I spent some time uh, reading or mostly just uh, checking on the photographs of uh, the books at this wonderful library they had at the Romanian mission in Buenos Aires, uh, books about Byzantium, uh, both in Romanian and in French. And in, when I ask myself, I wonder how I developed this uh, vocation of Byzantinist, I can trace that back to those days attending. Uh, the services at the Romanian embassy. So for me, this is my first uh, uh, trip to, to Romania. This is a way to, to round, finally, a uh, lifelong story with both the country and mostly the city. What are your first impressions? Because you said that you are for the first time here. Yeah, well, when we came from the airport to the hotel, the colleague who, uh, who drove me to the hotel, we took uh, Calle Victoria and, and uh, I, I noticed, uh, of course, the, the Bucharest that was in my mind was the Bucharest of the first part of the 20th century, the Bucharest that the Argentinians wrote about, the Bucharest uh, the, the Romanian immigrants in Buenos Aires uh, uh, talk about, uh, but I still found it. So I, 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 since yesterday, I'm saying what I was expecting to see, a society of uh, uh, urban life, uh, full of coffees and, and bookstores and cultivated people uh, that live uh, more or less in a, an eccentric place to the center of uh, uh, European life. And, and we uh, define ourselves, we are continuous, very much in the same way. I think that's why we always had this connection to, uh, mostly to Bucharest. So it's, it's, it's something mostly related to, to the city. And it's present in, in all the books that mention this. I, I just mentioned a couple of books that I read in my days at the secondary school, at high school, about Bucharest in the 30s and Buenos Aires in the 30s by French authors. And they told pretty much the same the same story and they had pretty much the same impressions when they lived in Bucharest and then when they moved to Buenos Aires as writers or diplomats and th those were the things I, I heard about, I read about and that's why uh, Bucharest was always there somehow uh, for me as an historian but for us Argentinians as, uh, as, as part of, of this uh, what we think it's, it's a plus in contemporary culture, uh, knowing how to live in 
in worldly cities, in cosmopolitan cities. That's what Buenos Aires. That what is what Buenos Aires is, and was evidently is also Bucharest, and that's why I, since yesterday I will see what happened till uh, I, I leave on Saturday. But since yesterday I feel pretty much, pretty much at home, naturally. Do you think you will come back to Bucharest? Well, I think that we already know each other with these Romanian colleagues from years, and I think that uh, we just began to, to think uh, about uh, common shared projects and I hope we could uh, follow these uh, endeavors and publish together and do some research together. Uh, hopefully that will bring me to Bucharest again, hopefully that will bring my colleagues to Buenos Aires, but anyway uh, we already established uh, a stronger, a stronger uh, link and that's what is important. Of course I would love to uh, to, to come back naturally. Thank you very much. You are very much you, welcome. We wish you a very pleasant stay and I hope that next time uh, we will have an, the second interview. Okay, wonderful and I see I've been delaying learning Romanian for years and maybe this is also the occasion for me to, uh, to tackle the language uh, back in Buenos Aires.